When I had journeyed half of our life's way, I found myself within a shadowed forest. For I had lost the path that does not stray. Ah, it is hard to speak of what it was. That savage forest, dense and difficult, which even in recall renews my fear, so bitter. Death is hardly more severe. But to retell the good discovered there, I also tell the other things I saw. I cannot clearly say how I had entered the wood. I was so full of sleep just at the point where I abandoned the true path. But when I'd reached the bottom of a hill, it rose along the boundary of the valley that had harassed my heart with so much fear. I looked on high and saw its shoulders clothed already by the rays of the same planet, which serves to lead men straight along roads. At this my fear was somewhat quieted, for through the night of sorrow I had spent, the lake within my heart felt terror present. At just as he who, with exhausted breath, having escaped, from sea to shore, turns back to watch the dangerous waters he has quit. So did my spirit, still a fugitive, turn back to look intently at the past that never has let any man survive. I let my tired body rest a while. Moving again, I tried the lonely slope. My firm foot always was the one below. And almost where the hillside starts to rise. Look there, a leopard, very quick and lithe, a leopard covered with a spotted hide. He did not disappear from sight, but stayed. Indeed, he so impeded my ascent that I had often to turn back again. The time was the beginning of the morning. The sun was rising now in fellowship with the same stars that had escorted in when divine love was first moved those things of beauty. So that the hour and the gentle season gave me good cause for hopefulness on seeing that beast before me with his speckled skin. But a hope was hardly able to prevent the fear I felt when I beheld a lion. His head held high and ravenous with hunger. Even the air around him seemed to shudder. This lion seemed to make his way against me. And then a she-wolf showed herself. She seemed to carry every craving in her leanness. She had already brought despair to many. The very sight of her was weighted me with fearfulness that I abandoned hope ever climbing up that mountain slope. Even as he who glories while he gains will, when the time has come to tally loss, lament with every thought and turn despondent. So was I when I faced that restless beast, which, even as she stalked me, step by step had thrust me back to where the sun is speechless. While well, I retreated down to lower ground, before my eyes there suddenly appeared, one who seemed faint because of the long silence. When I saw him in that vast wilderness, Have pity on me, whatever you may be, a shade or a man. Not a man. I once was. Both of my parents came from Lombardy and both claimed Mantua as a native city. And I was born, though late, sub Julio and live in Rome under the great Augustus. The season of the falls and lying gods. I was a poet and I sang the righteous son of Anchises, who had come from Troy when the flames destroyed the pride of Eve. 
But why do you return to wretchedness? Why not climb up the mountain of delight, the origin and cause of every joy? And are you then that Virgil, you the fountain that freely pours so rich a scream of speech? O light and honor of all other poets, may my long the study and the intense love that made me search your volume serve me now. You are my master, you are my author, you the only one from whom my writing drew the mobile subject style of which I have been honored. You see the beast that made me turn inside. Help me, O famous sage, to stand against her, for she has made my blood and pulses shudder. It is another path that you must take. If you would leave the savage wilderness, the best that is the cause of your outcry allows no man to pass along the track, but blocks him even to the point of death. Her nature is so squalid, so malicious, that she can never sate her greedy will. When she has fed, she is hungrier than ever. She mates with many living souls and shall yet mate with many more. Until the greyhound arrives, inflicting her painful death on her. That hound will never feed on land or pewter, but found his fare in wisdom, love, and virtue. His place of birth shall be between two felts. He will restore low-lying Italy, for which the maid Camilla died of wounds, and Nisus, Turnus, and Euryalus. And he will hunt that beast through every city until he trusts her back again to hell, from which she was first sent above by envy. Therefore, I think and judge that it is best for you to follow me, and shall I guide you, taking you from this place through an eternal place, where you shall hear the house of desperation and see the ancient spirits in their pain, as each of them laments his second death. And you shall see those souls who are content within the fire, for they hope to reach whenever they may be. The blessed people, if you would then ascend as the high as these, a soul more worthy than I am will guide you. I leave you in her care when I depart, because that emperor who reigns above, since I have been rebellious to his law, will not allow me entry to his city. He governs everywhere, but rules from there. There is his city, his high capital. Oh, happy those who choose to be there. O oh, poet, by that God whom you had never come to know, I beg you that I may flee this evil and worse evils to lead me to the place of which you spoke, that I may see the gateway of St. Peter and those whom you describe as sorrowful. Then he set out, and I moved behind him.